من خاک کرد چه دینی بود که دید آن اسمی بر است لنشابه Jacko, can you hear me? We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? You're very quiet. <laughs> that's not often said. There you go. That's it. Yeah, that's not often said, is it? <laughs> there you um, go. That's better. Yeah. So yeah, welcome to the Twelve Man Podcast. Uh, I'm Steve Jackson. I'm the main chair, as usual. Um, Mr. John Cotton's with me. Evening. Evening. How are we doing? Yep, spot on, yeah. If you didn't hear it the first time, what a difference a week makes. Exactly. Get it's it been... right that time. <laughs> it's been a good week. It's been a very good week. Um, just Mr. John Donovan with us on the hard stuff. Evening, John Don. Now then, you okay? We're doing good. Are you having fries with that or what? <laughs> <laughs> I love his you say, you, say what? you say it every other week, but I still laugh. I'm, an, I'm a good audience. So. <laughs> oh, I'm here every week. Um, I'll come to our guest first. He's not been on for a while. Um, you probably saw him bouncing around on the uh, front row on Saturday. Um, Yusuf's back with us. Evening, Yusuf. Is it Yusuf? Evening, all. Can't see him. He's too close to Johnny Olsen's beard. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You were, you were face deep in that beard like on Saturday it when he scored. Very, yeah. It was, it was very close. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you well? You good? Yeah, really well. Thanks. And yourselves? Yeah, we're all good, mate. We're all good. All good. All the better for having you on with us. So thank you for popping on. Um, hey, no problem, too. And last but not least, no means least, uh, Mr. Steve Dickens with us. Evening, Dicko. Evening, everybody. You okay? Better yeah, weekend? we're all good. Yeah, we've got a lovely weekend, lovely week. It's been great. Brilliant. So there's a reason why I've introduced him last. Obviously, our competition, well, prize draw. Let's not get the legality straight out of the way. Prize draw went live last week. Dick Law's going to update you with how we're doing. Over to you, Dick Law. Yeah, well, well, first of all, I'd just like to give thanks to everybody that's uh, entered the prize draw. Um, the response has been, to be honest with you, amazing. Um, and, you know, j- just thanks to everybody as well that's shared it, shared the links, done retweets, you know, and really tried to, to push it for for the food bank because it's a great cause and we're all on here appreciate it massively what you've done everybody so uh that's the first thing i want to say is thank you to every single person that's that, that's been involved um but fantastic so far off the first week we've we've, we've got 618 pounds for the food bank which is absolutely amazing to be fair it really has blown my mind away how generous teesside is um so we're eighty two percent at the moment towards the target, which is seven hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, so we need one hundred and thirty two pounds if we can over the next week to try and uh, hit the target for the for, for the food bank. So if anybody can donate or enter the prize draw and be generous, we we we'll all appreciate it massively. Um, just if anybody doesn't know what the prize is, it's a signed Carlin Cup retro shirt, signed by some of the legends from 2004, um, including England manager Gareth Southgate, um, Stuart Downing, Zard Nemeth, Macaroni, Bolo Zenden, uh, George Botang, Frank Quadru. So I'll, 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 just because John Don's here, I'm going to do me Rod Stewart. And I'm going to dive in like Rod. Where's he gone? Diving <laughs> like Rod and coming back. And that's the shirt there. 
which you can see it's all signed by the by the legends. Um, so if you'd like to, to get that, and if you're unlucky, there's a there's a runner up prize, which is the anniversary celebration program, um, which is also signed on the back by all the players I've just mentioned, which is another excellent prize to get. So, as I say, this the draw closes um, on Sunday. And we will do do the draw for the winners live on next week's podcast and pull the winners out live. So if you're not in it, get yourself in. And again, many thanks to all that's contributed. Yes. I'll I'll second yeah. that. Yeah, great effort. Well done, Dicko. Yeah. Dicko's um Dicko's donated the prizes, so well done to him. And I would ask anybody listening who's um who's sort of maybe he's owns a business or or, or um, is influential in a local business. It would be a fantastic uh, prize for your business to win, uh, and then you can you can sort of like uh, do whatever you want with it uh, amongst your employees. So come on, it's all tax deductible. Get the um, get the donations in and uh, get the chance to win a fan- fantastic sign shirt. It's tax deductible, I swear. <laughs> Great well, you know, you know these businesses work. Well, yes, we do. Um, great start. <laughs> <laughs> so before we do start, I mean, I never talk about what we talk about on our did podcast you, did... chat, but right, we I usually think right. Let's get Monday prepared. Let's go, John. John, what did we talk about in our group chat before we came on here? Eh? Uh, QPR. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't tell about his grin in his face. We talked about green bins. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it was the greatest job of the rest. Yeah. yeah. John's talking garbage again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you... Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> if, so if you yeah. think we're all well prepared and we're all drilled ready to go, we're really not. But if you really want to know what happens with your green waste, we know exactly what goes on with that now, thanks to Josh Jones. So there you go. Right. Anyone who wants this number, we'll give it live on air later. <laughs> I'll, I'll, t- I'll, I'll, I'll pin it. I'll pin it in the comments for you. <laughs> right. You mean so, you mean just Jones, the, just Jones, the waste manager for Middlesbrough Council? That just Jones. Yes, the waste services manager for Middlesbrough uh, Council who works in Middlesbrough. Right, okay. Yes, that's the guy. Yeah, just just so that I was clear. Yes. <laughs> if you need to find him, he's, he's in the offices in Middlesbrough. Um, ask for him by name; <laughs> he'll come down and see you. Uh, <laughs> uh, good luck, Jones. You can have a crack and wait now. Um, <laughs> so, quickly talk about Norwich because um, I think I think that's. Enjoy, it was quite an enjoyable game, Norwich. Obviously, the first 20 minutes was a bit garbage. Well, um, after the set, firstly, was it set, was it a sending off? Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Norwich fan, are you fuming? I don't care, to be honest. Fair enough. We, we've, had, we, we've had loads of decisions that have right. went against us that have been 50, 50, 50. It was a, it was a vicious, there. unprovoked attack. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it massively changed the game because... Was the five working against them the way they set up? I thought they they started really well until the red card. Uh, could have been more than one goal up. But yeah, yeah. but let's be honest, we've seen us play against ten men before where we've struggled. I thought against ten men we played really well. We utilized utilized the space, and uh, fair play to the lads. It's all about the results, so I don't care about the sending off. We played the wing backs really well, didn't we? Mm. Which is really good. Um, I find it quite funny that we we called Luke Ailing in the bin and passed it and uh, he's had two very good games and set up two goals <laughs> Co- correction some people called him it in the bin and passed it not everyone yeah i i didn't um these wouldn't let me have a ed- word in edgeways in the first 50 minutes last week so there we go go on you get your hand up i called him finished um go. and to be honest with you i stand by it um i think luke ealan has been excellent the last two games as he was on his debut away at Millwall. And he is past it because if he wasn't past it, Leeds wouldn't let him go. Um, and he's come to Middlesbrough. And That's he's, a bit clear. harsh, that. No, it, it's Just clear. Just because you say, get, you get let go by a club doesn't mean you're finished. Yeah, if, if you want to get promoted, it does, yeah. And Middlesbrough want to get promoted. So if he's not good enough for Leeds, he ain't good enough for us. And as far as I'm concerned, he's a top professional. He's come into the club. He's done well away at Millwall. He went through a sticky a patch where he was being caught out left, left, right, and centre for pace in a back four. 
I think the back five suits Luke Ayling, uh because he gets forward quite well. I think it suits his game. And you know what? The last two games, I think he's been excellent. I think he's been ex- he was excellent against Norwich. I think he's even better against QBR. Um, and if he does that from now to the end of the season, I'll be delighted. And he will prove to be a decent loan signing. But if any Middlesbrough fan has aspirations of Luke Galen being here next season, they're in cuckoo land because he's not good enough. Go so our, our first comment in from the night is Dave Lane. John Don does indeed look like a film star, but no Botox, Steve. Who have you paid to make that comment, Steve? <laughs> I, have to, I have to explain this. Davey Lane is a friend of mine and John's, and he was on the 12th man bus on Saturday for the first time with his, with his grandson and thoroughly enjoyed his day out. And he sent me a picture of John and himself and his grandson. And my comment was, What's happened with John Donovan on this photograph? You look like a film star. I says, who you paid? <laughs> I says, has you had Botox on this picture? You look like a million dollars. Honest to God, what a picture. I'll send you it after the show, John. It's a great picture, yeah, son. It, I looked like a film star, Lassie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a fabulous picture, mate. honest to God. You could hang it in the Louvre. <laughs> You're right, it was a great day out Saturday. But anyway, going on to Norwich. Uh, Yusuf, did you manage to get to the Norwich game? Sorry, I was on you. Um, no, sadly, I, I wasn't there, but I saw the highlights uh, of the game. Oh, cool. Okay. Were well, you yeah. jumping about your room, waving your hands up and down <laughs> when, you, when you saw the goals? No, honestly, no. I, I'm so different once I'm in the stage. And when I watch it on TV, I'm not. I'm not as uh, excitable. I have to say, but yeah, when I'm in the stage, something switches. I'm, I'm a different person. And I know exactly. I know exactly what you're saying. And do you know what? I love your demeanor in there because it gets everybody on view. So keep it up. Oh, you've thank just, you very much. You've just ruined it for all the listeners. Everyone was thinking of you in your room <laughs> doing all this. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. It's, it's actually harder to watch um, on the telly than it is there because when you're there, you're just in the moment. But when when you're on the telly, you can. It's. it's I don't know. It's, it's different. It's difficult to explain, but it's, it's different to um, to being in in the stadium for sure. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Absolutely. That COVID season. If you just go back a couple of seasons, that COVID season was an absolute nightmare, wasn't it? Oh, it was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, hopefully, that will never ever happen again. Yeah, fingers crossed, yeah, yeah. Well, if you vote right in a few months, it won't happen again. That's all I'm saying. Um, right, anyway, I'll move on from that because we'll get political and I don't want to do that. But, um, yeah, obviously, the red car came. Um, I mean, I'm not even going to talk about their goal. Their goal was shambolic and a bit of a laugh. Um, I was, yeah, I mean, the fact that Ashley Barnes fell over and still managed to fling a leg and score absolutely stunned me for starters. But then... Um, I'll come to Mystic Net Meg, sat it opposite me, because we all laughed at him when he came out and went, well, Norwich, we'll beat Norwich 3 1, don't worry about it. Don't push yourself off and think you smoke. No, no. Right? A red card helped you. But, <laughs> but uh, you, you, you called it. You said, you, you said we win 3 1. Yeah, I think we've had a lot of stick the last few weeks, the lads, and uh, probably 99% of it's been <clears> deserved, but. There's still a there's still some talented players in that squad, uh-huh. and it was gonna it was gonna turn one point and yeah. and I think we would have all said after we beat them on on Tuesday or Wednesday whichever night it was that we'd probably go to QPR and win as well because it's just typical Borough, <laughs> you know we probably all wrote off the playoffs a couple of weeks ago, but who's to say we're not going to win tomorrow and we're not going to win on Saturday and then we could be all talking about it again. It, it's a weird <laughs> and fantastic football club to follow. It really is, and it's we're all summed up in the last couple of weeks. No, it is. You're absolutely right. It's um, yeah, it's it's been a different week or so, hasn't it? You know, compared to what the last few weeks have been like. Um, but um, the pick of the goals. I let you pick the pick of the goals out of the three. I think Engels cracking finish, wasn't it? Yeah, full back to full back. Exactly. Oh, first was, time. Bang. It, it was a great finish. Uh, side of his foot, nice and composed. And as you let us know, I've given him quite a lot of stick this season. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm only too happy to put my hand up when he's doing well. And uh, it was a great goal and a great finish. It was. And uh, and what did you... Well, I, I... Go on, sorry, go on, John. 
Yeah, I think it was no, 30, it. thirty-five pound towards our charity bet. So yes, we did. We got another winner. It was great. <laughs> now stands at is it something like four hundred pound? We've we've got over four hundred quid. Yeah, so we're not far off paying for a season ticket. I'm just saying. Um, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. It's we'll something. start that again. Yeah, has, has it. Go on, John. Don't let you go. I was just going to say, I think we were we were all asking for a change of formation yeah. um, or a change of style uh, just to prevent us uh, being so porous at the back and, and, and having to vent every time on the edge of our 18-yard box. And the, the change was made for Norwich. Yes, we got off to a poor start, but um, we got we got the luck with the red card. Uh, but like uh, Kurt said earlier, Sometimes 10 men, especially when they're a goal up, sit behind the ball and frustrate the life out of you. So it was really good that we got two goals uh, to allow us to go into half time uh, for the first time in ages with a lead. Um, it, it, uh, it, it, it was good to see. I mean, it meant then that Norwich uh, had to come out second half and, and try and try and sort of equalise, get something out of the game. Um, and we rounded it off with Engel's goal. So it was a it, it was a great win, much needed, much needed for everybody's spirits, the players, the fans. Yeah, it just lifted everybody. Absolutely right. It was. Um, are you going to jump in, Dick? Oh, sorry, Malcolm. Yeah, yeah I, I was just going to say on last week's podcast when we're talking about what would like like the scene against Norwich. And I just jotted down a few things. What 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 we're saying was we'd love to go to a back three or a back five, whichever way you want to pretend it is. It's a back five, right? So you could go to back five. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There you go, right? So we'll, say, so we'll go three for John. So we wanted a back three. We wanted Lucas Engel back in the team, and we got that. We wanted Johnny Housen back in the team, and we got that. We wanted, and I'm sorry to say it, but it's true, we wanted Borlasa to have a rest. We wanted Paddy McNair back in the side. We wanted to see some tackles going in. We wanted to see some commitment, and we got that. And also, um, I'd said, I want to see the players who are playing in the wing-back positions, they get some crosses in the box. Because if you're not playing, if you're playing wing-backs, the whole point of it is to get up the pitch, get high up the pitch, and get crosses in the box. And we got that, both at QPR and Norwich. Crosses in the box by Engel and Aylin, which we got. And then what John Donovan was saying on last week's podcast was you would like to see Middlesbrough mixing it up from the back a bit more with a goalkeeper, Dieng. If it's not on, play it long. Lose the ball in their half if need be. Knock it long with your goal kicks, your pass backs. And we did that against Norwich. So we really got what, what we asked for, you know, which was credit to Michael Carrick for having the, having the you know, the flexibility as a young manager to accept that the way it was going wasn't working and to change it. So kudos to him. But I'll also just say it to finish on a point about the sending off. Yes, it wasn't the sending off. It wasn't a red card. But you know what? <laughs> I, you know, Middlesbrough have been a side bereft of confidence for the last few weeks. And we've, we've been caught out time and time again, especially at home. But sometimes moments change teams and something can just ins can inspire you, both as players and supporters. And I think everybody... When that moment happened, thought on and off the pitch, chance. This is the chance. We're not playing great. We've got no confidence. We're one nil down. Chance. And the players took the chance, and that inspired the supporters in the stand. And we'll, co we'll continue that on into QPR. It's change. It's moments and seasons that can just change your season. And for me, that was a moment. And so I thought fair play to every Middlesbrough player on the night against Norwich because they seized the opportunity and they gave Middlesbrough fans what we've been lacking for weeks. Well, you say uh, credit and kudos to Michael Carrick. I just think it shows that Michael is an avid listener of the 12th Man podcast and he uh, listens to uh, us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you never know. You well, never you, know. We well, you know what Michael does on a Monday night. He listens to us between seven and eight. <laughs> Evening, Michael. Um, but no, it was, it was a great, it was a great win. And like you, you rightfully said, there, it's a, it could be a change in the season. It really could be. You know, we've been waiting for something to go our way. And um, fair play saying give Barlasser a rest. That's a fancy way I've heard of ever saying dropped 
in my life. Well done. Um, because that's what he was, he was dropped. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good win. It was it was superb. Um I'll I won't go around and ask anybody he's man of the match. I'll ask you, you man of the match. My man of the match, you might be surprised by this, but I thought Matt Clark was absolutely outstanding, mate. And he's had a fair bit of criticism yeah. from certain quarters. But you've got to remember he's been out for a long time. Yep. And I think he's getting better and better every game. I thought he was excellent against Norwich, so I'm gonna give it to Matt Clark. There you go. And he's gonna he's He's our representative for this game. I'll ask you all yours for QPR, but you're unlucky. Um, there you go. So Matt Clark got the man of the match. And what else did you win on Wednesday night? Oh, yeah, because I was lucky enough with my uh, prediction. I was the only to, person that got it. Managed to win a signed print off our friend Bandy, so... Yes, the first of the two prints from Mr. Glandera. Spot on. Went to the man opposite me, so well done to him. Um, the second one, I'm going to reveal in ten, about 10 minutes, because that went as well. Did. So... We've had a positive week so far, so there you go. There's Norwich. And on the Saturday, QPR. John Don, unchanged. Were you surprised? I'm not surprised that we were unchanged. I weren't surprised. I thought, you know, keep, keep the team the same. He played really well for them 60 minutes we had against 10 men. Uh, yeah, I was surprised purely and simply because it's not, you know, it, I can't remember the last time we, we were unchanged. So, um, yes, uh, I, I was surprised, but pleasantly surprised. I thought... It was a good um, a good team that we put out. Um, so yeah, I, it was a great day out. Um, well up for it, come quarter past two when we left the pub, walk into the ground. Well up for the game. Um, got into the ground in in the upper tier in the rail seat, and uh, and it was uh, it was superb, great atmosphere. Yeah, it sounded it sounded a great atmosphere. It was um, it was great to see a lot of fans down there. They saved. About two thousand fans we took again, wasn't it? I mean, that's that's pretty impressive that for a team in the form that we are. Yeah, it, it is. It is. We could we travel well, don't we? We do. We do. That's one of the one of the best things. I'll I'll shout from the rooftops every week. We've got the best fans in this league. I don't care if you've got leads and whatever in this league. I don't care. We've got the best fans in this league, and I'll, I'll keep I'll keep backing it. But um, Yusuf, um, firstly welcome. Um, first time I'm speaking to you. Um. Unchanged team for Saturday. Um, were you was that about right for you as well? Did you feel nothing needed to be changed going into that game with QPR? Yeah, I think so. I think um, the only question marks would be um, the players that were out injured for a while, um, whether they were going to be fully fit to play again. The likes of Housen and Latte Lath um, that have had injuries, so that was the only kind of question marks. But if they were fit, there was no reason to uh, to change it. So I'm pleased that we're able to stick with the same um, eleven, and yeah, I thought I thought we had we, we gave a solid performance for sure. Yeah, Dicko, same same opinion for you as the other two. Yeah, I was more than happy with the lineup. I, I was wondering whether he was going to give Aylin a rest and, and and bring Isaiah Jones in at wing back since he didn't come on against Norwich, but that was the only one. But no, I thought he got it spot on, leaving the unchanged team. We won, played well. No need to change it. Um, no, no complaints whatsoever, which is a nice change for me. Mm-hmm. Is that the same with you? Yeah, yeah. I, I just can't get over Dicko having no complaints, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Clip that, clip it. Um, but no, it was, um, I mean, I won't delve too far into the first half. I thought first half, they were probably the better team. They, say they created a couple, a couple of good chances. Dieng made a couple of good saves, one notably from um, Chris Willick. It was a really good save down to his right hand side. Um, mm-hmm. That was a really good save. But second half, I, I just want to come straight through to the the game, the part, the part of the game that cha- the moment that changed the game for me, big time. Obviously, Smith gets around Dieng. That tackle from a nineteen year old kid. Oh, what a tackle! Like what a tackle that is. I mean, I mean, you just made you just made it sound straight away that. that I could, I could, <laughs> I feel exactly the same. Talk to me. How good was that tackle? Well, stuff, stuff like that means as much to me as as oh, a goal massively. because it was outstanding. We keep going on about him every week, and and how good he's he's looking. And and Sophie's messaged in saying we should all have Vandenberg pajamas after his last performance. And I totally <laughs> that that was that was that was a tackle of an experienced, top quality centre half. 
for however long we've got that lad at this football club, we should enjoy it because he is going to be some player in. Tre- yeah, treasure the kid. Absolutely treasure him. John Don is 19. He's 19 years old. He's unbelievable. No. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? But you, you talk about uh, incidents that change games and that certainly changed that game. I mean, we could have been 1-0 down, but he, um, he he put in that tackle in the box. If he'd have got it wrong, um, he either brings the player down or the player puts it the ball into an empty net. He got it bang on. Uh, it changed the game. Um, so yeah, that that was um, that was the point in the game that uh, that was crucial for me. Yeah, and then obviously following on from that, let's say a few minutes later, um, I'll come to you, Dick. Though that the ball goes in from um, from Clark, and it was a cracking finish again from uh, from Latte Laugh. First time. <laughs> no touch, just flung his right foot at it, bang, bottom corner. Yeah, uh, brilliant finish. It was a you know, a, a volley by Matt Clark with his left peg onto Latte Laff volley with his right peg. Um, superb finish. He meant it. He knew exactly what he was doing. Um, difficult finish to to to, to do as well. Uh, and he, I, I think Latte Laff, if he had been fit all season, would be pushing by 20 goals this season. I think he's a really good player. Um, he's only going to get better. I think he's he's proven to be value for money. His stats are good. Um, he's adapting to the English game. I think we've got a really good player on our hands for next season. Um, just just re- regarding Rav Vandenberg there, uh, I just said before the Norwich game, fine margins, sending off, same at QPR, fine margins. That's that's the moment in the game at QPR, like John Don said. That could be a red card. It could be a penalty. It could be a goal. Moments change games. Middlesbrough now seem to be getting those moments. We've, we've been bereft of them for the, for the last, it seems forever. But it, now things are starting to change and that's what we want. You know, he, he come in there, you know, it was a fantastic tackle. He was like Rav van Beckenbauer, you know what I mean? Just come from nowhere, took him out. Absolutely superb. And he, he's looking a real player and I, I just hope um, like Hackney and, and like Isaiah Jones, you know, I hope we can keep these players. Um, McGree's another one. I hope we can keep them on our books for next season and add to the squad because we, we, we have got the makings of a really good side when everybody's fit. So just for the record, now we've got the Championship Zidane <clears throat> and Beckenbauer. Are we not top of the league here? <laughs> <laughs> just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Rav van Beckenbauer. I'll tell you what, though. That, that little cushion pass from Matt Clark was good as well. It was lovely. It was, it was a Clark, he's had a good couple of weeks, John. You, you mentioned man the match against Norwich. And if it hadn't have been for, for Rav Vandenberg's display at QPR, he'd have, he would have possibly got man the match at QPR. He's, he's, having, a, he's having a really good... A good time as as, as Clarky as it well to be fair because we haven't mentioned him. Let's give a, a little bit of credit to uh, Paddy McNair as well, who's yes. also mm-hmm. been superb um, and made a huge difference in there as well with his experience. Um, the back three are looking really good at the moment. Yeah, we. I mean, we all we all were asking you know if we're going to make it a back five, who we all bring in? And um, I think no, no, we all had Paddy. We all had Paddy in there, didn't we? So yeah. Um, Says it all. I mean, going to the Facebook comments there, Ryan Elliott's come in and said, um, do you think he'll stay after Rodgers? I'm nervous. Obviously, he's going on about Vandenberg, isn't well, he? Let's be honest. If we were to sell this summer, it's going to take a really big bid. You oh. look at, you're looking over £20 million pounds now. Oh, God, easy. For a, a centre-half at 19-year-old that's doing as well as him, if, if we're getting whatever we got for Rodgers, rumoured to be between 10 and 15, Vandenberg's got to be worth at least 20, but I really hope we keep hold of him for at least another year. He lets us have a push next year. And like I said, we're, we're going to make some big money on that, lad. We really are. Oh, he's an absolute... He's, an, he's, he's a man mountain. He's a giant. 19 years old, unbelievable. But um, <laughs> I know, I keep saying it. I, I'm absolutely stunned by it. He's, just, he's absolutely unbelievable. He's one of the best teenage footballers I've seen. It's not just he's his performances good. on the pitch. He's been he's been captain of the side as well this year. Yeah. And captain at 19 year old. So, Whether oh. we've got leaders in that dressing room or not, it's still a massive statement to say, there you go, son. Exactly. I mean, I know I mentioned obviously last week, you know, Dale Fry got that honour as well. But if you want to go back to the, one of the big ones that got that honour, Tony Mowbray got that honour. You know, he was a teenager. He got the captain's armband. So, he's in good company. He's in really good company. We've had some colossal centre-halves down the years at oh, this gotcha. football club. But I don't... I personally, in the 30-odd years I've been following this football club, I don't think I've seen a better 19-year-old centre-half than him. 
No. In fact, I don't even know if I've seen a better nineteen year old than him. Maybe maybe you could put down in there, but you you are you are talking about footballers, aren't you? I mean yeah. that's a that's a big that statement, that okay. John that's a big statement that cuts. That's can a you, big statement. Can you, well, try and think of some 19-year-olds that have looked as good yeah. as what he's looked. And it, it, I mean, you've got to go off position. Now, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I would probably go back and think of a player. Uh, Tony Mowbray was a rugged centre-half. How, how old was Gary Pallister when he made his debut? Because he was a, a culture, he was a bit more of a footballing centre-half like Rav. How old uh, was he when he uh, made his debut? Was, I think he must have been in his 20s, though, was he, Pally? Early 20s. So, yeah, he's in, good, he's, 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 in, he's in good company. He's right up there anyway, put it yeah. that way. That's one for the, our listeners, if you know how old Gary Pallister was, mm-hmm. get in touch. Um, but move on to the second goal. I've left Yusuf out for this one. I'm going to put him back in for this one because he was front and centre when Marcus Foss <laughs> stood there in front of that way. And, um, that poor steward trying to stop a few people and poor Yusuf just piled in and went, move, I want in. But um, give a bit of credit to the goal. I know you mentioned it as well, John Don, in your tweets. But Yusuf, that header from Marcus Force, he's what he's running backwards, he's having to compose himself, and it's a hell of a header. And by the way, FYI, Marcus Force scores goals. I'll keep saying it every week. Scores goals, another goal, and a great finish. But yeah, how was how was it touching Johnny Housen's beard? <laughs> It wasn't even deliberate. Just I wasn't going to ask me about the goal. I didn't know you were going to ask me about touching his bid, but um, yeah, um, it's yeah. Better than, it's better than the two beards that we can see. Yeah, yeah. I tell you that much. Come on, my beard. Leave my beard. That Johnny Alton's beard is it's, it's a very nice beard. I have to say, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know what he does watch. with it. I don't know if he tampoos it, but um, yeah, something he does with it. It's just yeah, it's got a nice little texture. I ask it. the right questions, mate. That's why I ask. Did it, did it smell nice, Yusuf? I didn't even smell it. I didn't smell it. I didn't smell it. But I just felt it. I just remember feeling it. It's I, just <laughs> I can't answer that question either. Um, no. yeah, it felt it that. felt really really good. This is a new section for the show, Johnny Housen's beard. <laughs> Every week now, guys. Moment of the week sponsored by Johnson Johnny Housen's beard. There we go. No, the, fair play. I mean, y- Yusuf, it was superb to see the fans. Celebrating with the players, you know, it, it was it was it was great to see. Um, I mean, there wasn't just you; there was there was quite a few, you know, who um who, who joined in the celebrations. And, and I think everybody knew, you know, that that was the goal that was going to clinch us the three points. So, so yeah, well, why not go mad? Why not dive in and celebrate? I was in the upper tier. I think if if I'd have been down downstairs, I might have done exactly the same. There's no mate about it. There's no mate about it. <laughs> You're like, you seen Bolt across the terraces there, you, yeah, Yusuf. I've seen you. You're on the right-hand side. I watched. I've seen you careering through, right across the goal to catch him. Good of turn of pace. Force, yeah. Good turn no, of pace. Force, force just stood there, so I thought, might as well run and celebrate with him. So, yeah, it was it was a nice <laughs> moment, I have to say. No, it was so, brilliant. what was your view, what was your view of the goal, then? Um, you know, because obviously, Lord, uh, I thought you were going to say your, Johnny Housen's beard there. The <laughs> 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 what, uh, what was your view of the goal, and what was your what was your thoughts when it went in? Yeah, I mean, as soon as the ball went in from Aylin and it went to um, to to force, you just knew he was going to score. And he's one of those players where you just know anything he touches goes in the back of the net, or at least makes the keeper. Uh, save it so I had no um, qualms that it was going to be a goal and um, I think Force believes every time he has the ball he's going to score and I think a lot of strikers they lack that um, that belief they'd probably try a bit too much but Force just wants to put the ball in the back of the net he's an old-fashioned striker if you like he just wants to score goals and um, there's probably not too many uh, strikers around like that anymore although I say striker I mean he's been playing right wing for most of the time under Carrick but he is he is our best finisher by a long, long way. So, yeah, I had no uh, qualms about him scoring. I mean, yeah, he's selfish at times, but that's what you want from um, a man in front of goal. You know, who, you want him to have confidence in his own ability. Um, but but that finish, uh, like I said, he saw the he saw the cross coming. He had to run backwards to get himself in position, and and the header. He must have only been about five or six yards from the touchline. Yeah, through no, Begovic. And Begovic, Begovic is no mug. 
and um, he, he put it through Begovic into the far corner. Superb, I, I, absolutely I superb. Think, I don't think Begovic thought he was going for goal. The cross come in it was like a lofted cross, was quite high. There wasn't that much pace on the cross. It wasn't a bullet of a cross. And the, the, the leverage he got to get up to head it was impressive to start with. And I think Begovic, he set himself expecting force to head it back across goal for somebody to come in to, to score. And I think what, why he scored was Begovic was just completely bamboozled by the fact that he not only got up, but headed it on target into the roof of the net. And Begovic, as a goalkeeper, was set thinking he's going to head this back across goal and I'm going to move across goal to react to where it's going. And he just beat them all ends up. It was a... It was a superb header, really good. I mean, there's a, there's a photograph of it on the internet showing Marcus Force at the back post with the cross coming in. And if it was the old the olden days, the kids won't get this one, but we will. If it was the old spot the ball competition, we had to put the X where the ball was. You wouldn't have believed that he got his head on it. It was incredible. You might know what that is, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a we've got a couple of Facebook comments in. David Moss says Rav's a forty million pound player. Ryan Elliott says he deserves a chance. Like here too, easy fifteen to twenty goals without injury. I think a good end of the year will help us hang on to some key players. Going to be a really important summer for our future. Before you go on to that next one, uh, Mr. Rav Bamdenberg does have a new chant. Um, if you go online, go on, go on um, X, Twitter, whatever it's called. Um, Mr. John Donovan's happily put the words up, and if you look below it, Mr. Jamie Dalgano is happily auditioning how to sing it. How not to sing after, it. Yeah, how not to sing it after about 15 <laughs> yeah. cans down his throat. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it was a train journey home. There's obviously been a few drinks involved. Yes, there? but um, there you go. If you want to go online, have a little look. Um, the chant looks a beaut, to be fair. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to getting me... Yes. Get, get my voice around that one and, uh, and obviously get, getting stuck in. It's going to be a good one to sing. So um... And to prove that we're a finely uh, oiled machine, Tom Marin, the first thing Force always thinks is, how can I get closer to the goal? Very direct player. I think he's quality. Speaking yeah. of Tom Marin, Stephen's got something to say. <laughs> yeah, amen. Even Tom. Most people know Tom if you've got the Southern away games. Um, he had 2-0, Marcus Force. Um, so well done, Tom. Um, get in touch with us. Um, send us across your details. Uh, you've got a signed print coming your way from Mr. Graham Bandera. Um, so well done. Um, that's two out of the three gone. So I didn't realise he sent me two of the, the Riverside ones. So I'm quite privileged by that. Um, so we've got one more to give away. So hopefully we'll give that away this week as well. But uh, it's not been a bad week, has it? No. Bit of charity money. Two competitions won. Like buses, aren't they? Uh-huh. It's not a bad one. Like a fine oil mm. machine. I so would you say uh, when, the I mean, match, when the match then for Saturday? Would you say, lads? It's got, to be it's got to be Vandenberg, hasn't it? Yeah. I, I, I would, I would like to give a big shout out to Johnny Housen, who I thought has changed the dynamics of the team, helped the team, being a colossus both against Norwich and QPR. But on, on the QPR game, um, I thought Rav Vandenberg was head and shoulders above anybody else. Superb on me. What, what? Well, his partners um, either side, you know, Clark and uh, McNair, superb. It, it was a it was a great performance. Again, Luke Allen done really well. Um, yeah. He, um, he when we play three at the back, his defensive duties are, are eased because obviously we've got that extra extra centre half. Um, Luke Allen played well, but I'll have to agree with Vandenberg. I mean that that tackle alone was the game changer and. The, the the guys the guys immense. I'm so glad we've um, we've got him at our club, and I, I hope he's here for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, How about you, Yusuf? Yeah, Rav as well. Uh, you can't look further than Vandenberg. I thought he was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone's spoken a lot about him today. He's just he's just so so good. I just hope he stays for one at least one more year. I think it's it's too soon. I think if he was to go this summer, I just hope he stays. At least one more year, and then he can get a really, really good move. But, um, but yeah, man of the match by a long, long way. Jack, well, I mean, if we show sorry, but if we show ambition, you know, um, if we carry on uh, and have a good end to the season and and show ambition in the summer transfer window, it it'll it'll hopefully make him think that his future is here. Um, you, you've seen so many 
great young players move to bigger clubs yeah. and their career stalls. I, I'm hoping, you know, he's getting the right advice and he, he stays with us for a few more seasons, uh, could even be pushing for the Premier League in maybe his next season or the season after. I just hope he's a part of that. I think Michael Carrick staying will be key. I think he enjoys playing under Michael Carrick. He's made him captain at 19 year old. He's going to develop under Michael Carrick. Um, and I think he will definitely stay another season, unless we get a ridiculous bid. I think he will stay in the next season and have a fantastic season next season. I think Middlesbrough will be stronger next season. And if we're pushing for the Premier League, I think Rav Vandenberg will be more than happy to stay at Middlesbrough next season. So I think the signs are good for that. I think he's, like you say, like Hackney as well, you know. Hackney's, to me, can, can you remember when, I think it was um, Chris Wilder persuaded uh, Marcus Tavernier, he said, have one more year, see if we can get in the Premier League, and then if we don't get there, you can move on. I can imagine similar talks happening with Rob Vandenberg in the summer. Yeah, agreed. Man, the match for you, Jack? Oh, God, yeah, it's Vandenberg. Class above anything. Um, big shout out to that defence, though. Clean sheet. Mm-hmm. Very rare. So, clean sheet, which is very, very good. Well, I was going to say, it's going to kill me agreeing with you four, but uh, not not particularly Yusuf, I just mean you three, but I've got to agree with you three. <laughs> and Sophie's got in touch. Pally, uh, Pally was 19 when he made his debut. There you go. There you Thank go. You. Thank you. Um, so, there you go. Saves me. Did she, did she put her glasses on to read that stat? <laughs> <laughs> no, like dad's... father, like daughter. No, I dad's nicked him. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't say that, the poor girl. I know. <laughs> but, um, she knows more than me thankfully for her <laughs> yes um, I'll leave it there um, right um, I've got I've got quite a bit of control on this one uh, we're 45 minutes in and I've uh, Storm I've, I know we flew for this bit right Birmingham tomorrow uh, our game in hand um, John Don we win tomorrow we are five points behind Hull you know, you know them them playoffs we all wrote off two weeks ago, which were I'm still in the camp. We're not going to do it. Do we now? Do we now have to start writing them out again, and then before we write them off again? Well, you know, um, obviously, until it's mathematically certain that we won't be in, we still have a chance. But I, I'm like you. I think it's it's more more unlikely than likely because obviously after the international break. We've got some really tough games, um, especially like Ipswich away, Hull away, Southampton away. You know, there's some, there's some tough games. Um, but I just want us to 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 have a good end to the season, to be to be positive, to, to, to pick up the odd result. If we can get shocks along the way and and stay within um, within touch and distance of the play, playoffs, who knows? Who knows? You know, I mean, we we've got uh, Jones to come back into the team. We've got Hackney to come back into the team. So who knows? Um, yeah, I, I think it's highly unlikely, but it's not mathematically impossible. No, you're absolutely right. I think I think we've given ourselves away a bit a bit too much to do. But um, are you in that camp as well? Yeah, it'll be difficult. I mean. We'll... Two wins in a row now, we're going to need to go on a, a mental run from now until the end of the season, really, to get close. Hmm. Um, and there's always that team, isn't there, that catches form about now. I mean, I hate to say it, Coventry did it last year and got in and finished fifth and then did the job against us. It's it's still a big gap, though. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. I say I'm still in the gap, gap where I, I, don't think, I don't think we'll do it. I think there's too many teams in between us. Fair enough, if it was like a gap and then nothing between us, like say, like we were seventh, and then obviously they're they're sixth. But there's t- I keep it in my microphone. There's too many teams in between us. You still got Cardiff in there, Preston, mm. Norwich. You know, teams like that are all still in there. You know, it's going to be difficult. Um, you see if you make the journey to Birmingham tomorrow. No, unfortunately not. I've got work, so I'm going to give it a miss. But I'll be watching uh, watching on the telly again. And what are you what are you expecting from the uh, trip to St Andrews tomorrow? It's a, it's, a, it's, a t- it's a tough ground, St Andrews. It's a really tough ground to go to. Um, obviously, they, they're now... Is it fourth bottom they are now? Pretty sure they're yeah. fourth bottom, you know. Yeah, point, point of the relegation zone. Oh. 
So it's going to be a tough one, but um, yeah. What we say, as John's on disappears. Bye, John. Um, what we say, what we saying, Yusuf? Then you know how how difficult we're we going to find this one. Yeah, it's going to be really, really difficult. It's quite similar to when we played Stoke last week, because obviously Stoke needed a win. They were at home, um, but at the end of the day, um, we've probably got better players than Birmingham. But it's not football's not about who's got better players and who's got a better team. You know, Birmingham probably need the win more than we do because, like you, like everyone's saying, playoffs is unlikely. But um, survival is, is is obviously Birmingham's big, big game. So it's going to be a really, really difficult game. We've struggled against Plymouth and Stoke in, you know, the last few weeks. So it's it's going to be a tough game. But if we can keep the momentum going, you know, one back-to-back games, then 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 who knows? Yeah, I mean, their form's not great all of a sudden, is it? I mean, you just, I've, I've caught you having a look there. Yeah, well, funnily enough, it's, it's coincided with... Uh, obviously, Borough legend Tony Morbier taking a bit of a a, a back seat there, um, because when he initially came in, they they picked up a bit after the debacle of Rooney. Uh, obviously, all of our best wishes are for Tony. We've said it yeah. in the past on the pod, but uh, tomorrow, hopefully, it's three points for Middlesbrough, and um, it's it's about how we perform. I keep saying it. It's about how we approach the game tomorrow. We've got we've got the ability in the squad to go there and get three points, but you just never know watching this football club. You never know. That's the best thing about tomorrow, isn't it? We've got no one else. I don't think anybody else around us is playing. Is, I think we're the only game in the championship, think, aren't we? I think we're the only one. It's a game so, in hand, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we've Because of the no Chelsea one... game. Yeah, it's the only game in the championship tomorrow. Yeah, it's no, because I... we won the cup against Chelsea. It's our game in hand. No. What was it? I thought it was. The, I thought it was an FA Cup game. Right, you yeah, might be right. But, um, I thought it was. I thought it was for the Chelsea one. But um, you know, there's no there's no distractions. You can't look. Players can't look because players can sense from a crowd if there's something going on in other games that it's going to affect us. But there's no one else around tomorrow. Oh. So, Dicko, what are you expecting from tomorrow? I say it's, uh, actually Ryan Elliott's correct. Both Dicko and Jack are both wrong. It was Birmingham's FA Cup replay that caused the game to be postponed. So I was really ah. happy to report that. Well done, well done, Ryan. <laughs> it wasn't the FA Cup. It was their fourth round game. Get that right, Ryan. You're going to try and fact check me, right? Oh, was it a Saturday? There you go, then. <laughs> Get back in your box. Um, anyway, Dick, I'll come back to you. <laughs> um, what are you expecting from tomorrow night? Yes, it'll be it'll be a tough game. They're in a bad run. I don't think they've won since Tony Mowbray took bad and took time off. I don't think they've won a game since then. Uh, Mark Venus is in charge at the moment, ex Borough assistant manager. Aye. Um, but they've only lost one of the last six at home, so they're not too bad at home. I think they've won three out of the last six as well. But if you had asked me this question a few weeks ago before we changed the formation and the, the, the our last two performances, I would have been expecting Birmingham to do what Stoke done to it and just come out and bully her and hassle her and harass her and get the three points and. Middlesbrough roll over and get the bellies tickled, but I don't think so now. I think what Middlesbrough have showed over the last couple of games is that we're going to fight up for the fight with uh, Housen and O'Brien in the midfield, and the back the back five putting in tackles and and, and st- we, we seem a little bit different at the moment, Middlesbrough, and we're getting players back now. You see, Isaiah Jones comes into the mix as well, so I I, I think the bit the first goal tomorrow is in, in every championship game. It's oh, massive. Geez. In the, in the same tomorrow night, uh, if we go and score first, the Birmingham fans, you know, how are they going to react to Middlesbrough scoring first? Yeah, they haven't won in four games, and we, we've got the quality to do so with, with the four, with the forwards that we've got. The, their captain's out, Sanderson, the centre backs out, so I'm sure Latia Laff will be licking his lips at that prospect. So I fully expect Middlesbrough to go and um, and hopefully get something from the game, whether that's a draw or a win. I'll be I'll I'll be Really disappointed if Middlesbrough come away with nothing. Yeah, same. I say we've got we've, we've got, I mean, there's no pressure. I mean, in a way, there's no pressure tomorrow because we've got nothing to lose in a way that we're not going to lose further ground because there's no it's our game in hand. But we've got so much to gain tomorrow, so much. I just think la- la- last week, if you remember, you asked me. I think I was only one. Now I said we aren't in a. Re- I said we aren't in a relegation battle. I could see the the surprise in people's eyes looking at the screen. And I said we're not in a relegation battle because we're too good. 
with points we've got, the goal difference that we've got, the game in hand that we've got at Birmingham, the players we've got coming back from injury, in Housen, I said, and uh, Isaiah Jones. And we've got Lenehan coming back, Hackney coming back. If we were to win tomorrow night and then roll into Blackburn at home and beat Blackburn, I think there'd be a few teams looking over the shoulder, looking at Middlesbrough and the squad we've got and the players we've got coming good at the right time. Bearing in mind, Hull are the team we need to catch. And I think we've still got to go to Hull away, haven't we? We yeah. have, yes. Um, so I mean... the, 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 there's, there's still dynamics in the season that could happen. Me personally, I probably think Middlesbrough, like I said, in January, will just fall short of the playoffs. But if we can somehow get a result tomorrow night, rock into Blackburn and get a result at home to Blackburn, I think there'll be one or two teams looking over the shoulder. And you know what? It would just be nice just to to keep the season going for the supporters and especially the ones that travel home and away, just to know they're going away from home mm-hmm. with something on the game. Absolutely. And as I say, we've got some big games. You've got Leeds at home, Hull away. You know, these are all going to be massive games coming up. So I think tomorrow night's a, a big game for Middlesbrough as it is for Birmingham. Yeah, absolutely. And plus, like you said, mate, if we can get two wins this week, it's four wins on the bounce. All of a sudden, you think, well, no. He's back from uh, putting his fresh um, batch of chips on. Um, here he is. I thought he's putting. His, <laughs> I thought he's putting the bins out. <laughs> no, that's Josh's. That's Josh's job. Uh, Waste Services Manager for Middlesbrough Council. If you've forgotten, um, <laughs> John, Dan, I'll come back to you. Um, what are you expecting from tomorrow night? Um, a, a relegation battle. You know, a team that's uh, hovering above the bottom three, um, who are in a poor run of form. Um, who are going? Who are going to scrap for everything? I would imagine. Um, but just like QPR, um, yeah, I, I, I want us to um, go in at half time, still in the game, um, not 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 as we've done on so many occasions, um, having it all to do second half. And um, it, it, it's going to be it, it, it's it, it's it's going to be difficult. Um, and obviously, you know. We don't know because of um, because of the players back from injury and, and some of them have played two games on the bounce. We don't know what sort of formation, what sort of team Michael Carrick will put out. But I'm going there hopeful, you know, that we can um, we can get at least a point and and, and hopefully um, get the three and and put us uh, put us in good mood for uh, for Saturday's game against Blackburn. Absolutely. Um, Time that quite well. I'm going to hand over to you now because you can go through all the, the predictions for mm. what's coming this week. Yeah, well, Jason the bus driver's going 1 0 as as. <laughs> Jason the bus driver. I'm good. going for uh, Laugh. Anytime. Which game is this, John? Sorry, which uh, game? Birmingham. Birmingham. Birmingham, okay. So Jason's 1 0 as as. I'm going for Laugh 2 1. Jack Wall? 2 0. There'll be another 2 0. And I think I'm going to go for it again. I think Vandenberg, Vandenberg to pop one. JD, three one. Lovely. Um, Matt Clark. Whoa, this that'll be some price. Here that. we go. Get some more pennies in for that extra season ticket. Here we go. Dick Uh two one Middlesbrough. Lattie will have to score. Yeah, for the second week in a row, you've copied exactly the same as me. Do you want to pick another, <laughs> to pick another one? Yeah. Marcus Force 2-1. There you go. <laughs> great John minds think alike. Like, great, great minds think alike, John. You know. I know you see, I can, I can imagine some of the listeners tuning in and out every now and again, but you're supposed to be on the show. You should be listening to what we're saying. <laughs> I keep forgetting we can't do the same score. Well, the, best thing is, the best thing is you said it 20 seconds ago. That's the best part about him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yusuf? 1-0 uh, Riley McGree. 1-0 McGree. Okay. Which will then take us on to... So we've all gone for a win there, haven't we? We have indeed. So that's three wins in a row. That'll take us nicely into Blackburn Saturday. That'll be a you go game. first, You go first, John, so I know what you're saying. Go on. What, like last time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Get, I sorry, can I, mean, I just ask... Go on, can go. I just ask... Yusuf, are you going up tomorrow? No, I was just saying to the lads before, uh, I've got work, so sadly I'm not going to be there tomorrow. I missed that. I was I was doing the chips. 
A few, few too many people went large with their orders, so he was a bit busy. Um, are you up on Saturday for the game, though, Yusuf? I'll be back on Saturday for sure, yeah. Oh, that burn. Well, one thing's Good for lad. certain, a million percent, Dicklow's not copying the same score as me, are you, for Saturday? Blackburn at home, Lat here, laugh, any time, 4-2 in a barnstormer. <laughs> He's got his number generator back. <laughs> he's, he's recharged it. There we go. 4 2. Jack Wall? Uh, I'll go the same score. 2 0. I thought you meant 4 2. No, no, I'm not daft. 2 0. 2 0. And I'll go Paddy McNair. There you go. JD? 3 0. Um, Marcus Foss. Dicko? I'll go Laddie Laugh. Laugh, Laugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who should I? I'll go 2 1 Middlesbrough, Riley McGree. 2 1 McGree. Yusuf? 1 0 again, um, and this time uh, Lewis O'Brien. Okay, and just to mix things up, Danny's come in and said he's going to go 1 1. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He hasn't really. <laughs> Even Dally. <laughs> um, Sharon, Sharon, who we know pretty well, has gone Borough win 2 1. Yeah, but read them goal scorers. Ra- Ryan, Shaz, Giles, Ryan Giles and Latte laugh. Put the wine down. <laughs> Shaz, put the wine down. Go back to Leeds, man. Come on. Ryan Giles. <laughs> well, we've, all, we've all gone for six points out of six there, so. That would make it very interesting if we did get them. It would. It'll it would. It, it'll make it interesting next Monday when we get none out of six and we'll all look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all sat here absolutely fuming. I think, we'll be de- I think we'll all be delighted with four points, wouldn't we? Whichever way they get it, we'll be delighted with four. If we get a, a win yes, of Birmingham, the draw, so. either way around. Four points will be a great return after two wins on the bounce. Of course it would. But we're all sat here next week, absolutely fuming, and then Dick Hudson and Joyce own, own name out of that draw and win both prizes, and we'll be even more fuming. So, don't say that. Imagine, imagine if that happens. Sharon's message back, by the way, she meant McGree, not Ryan Gell, so that's an easy mistake yes. to make. Yeah. Hey, I might not be on next week, you know, I booked myself a holiday, so, you know. Oh, you I might not said... be on. What? Well, well shocking that. that. You've, I mean... you've done a, a prize draw... For next week, <laughs> you've just now said you're not going to bother. So, I'm only, I'm only kidding, folks. I'll be here. Don't I mean, worry. who on earth goes on holiday while the season's on? I mean, come on. I'm um, only kidding. I'll be here. Don't worry. To be fair, I booked, I booked to go away in September again. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, but um, well, well, he's me. I, I missed Leicester, didn't I? So, I mean, yeah, you know, did. Yeah. Well, Sharon's replied again. She'll come on instead of you, Dick. Will. She let her get on. Come on anyway. She can come on anyway. Yeah, you can tell us yeah. all about Luke Haley if you want. Sharon can pick the ball out the bag. What? Is she aware of the uh, swear filter? Well, <laughs> judging by the two Fs in an S that she put after it, I don't think so. <laughs> Shaz has no filter. She has a filter of her own. So, um, yeah, that's that'll be an easy big button. But, um, Anything more you want to add? Hey. Yeah, yeah by the way, Sharon, if you want to come on next yes, week, absolutely. You're more than welcome. Feel free. You say it every week. It's not a it's not a closed house. <clears throat> nope. Any of the fans who want to come on and join us, you're more than welcome. So exactly. get in touch. Well we we've got we've got a a, a regular with a Geordie accent. We've got uh, Sharon who's got a West Yorkshire accent. She can come on. It's very diverse. We've got Yusuf <laughs> from London on. <laughs> yeah. It's you, very yeah. diverse. You okay. said, can I just ask, did, did you walk to uh, to QPR? How far are you away from there? Honestly, that, everyone makes that same joke. Every London away day, everyone makes the same joke. Just for, the, just, for the, just for the record, London, you said. London's only the size. Of, it's only the size of Stokesley, isn't it, London? Just for well, the record, just for the record you said, John, was, John wasn't joking. He was deadly serious. Oh, I, I thought I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> that would take him two hours to walk. <laughs> that was massive. That was class. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad Yusuf's announced the charity walk from his house to Loftus Road next season. <laughs> oh, God, what have I started? <laughs> it's only 22 hours. You can walk back as well. Oh, oh my well, If he runs as quick as he did on Saturday at QBI, he'll do it in an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he will. Yeah. <laughs> Bang him in the just, GB just team him, for the 10,000 metres. Go on, son. You're getting that. Just tell him there's a beard at the finish line. 
<laughs> oh God. Hey, we've got we've got a, a question here from Ryan Elliott for Yusuf. Question for Yusuf. How was it being mentioned by Lineker on the rest is football about the Cole Palmer celebration, which we all know was Rogers? Yeah, I mean the whole media was just uh, ridiculous. They kept on saying um Cole Palmer celebration, Cole Palmer celebration, Cole Palmer celebration. But um but yeah, that was a pleasant surprise. I, I, I listened to the rest is football all the time. So when I saw um Lineker, uh Michael Richards and Alan Shearer talking about it, that was a bit bizarre. Um the, the fact that they've seen my face is just yeah unreal. Yeah. But um but yeah, it was it was it was a surreal 24 hours from put up, being put on Sports Bible and yeah, it, it went a little bit crazy. Well That's... Yosef, um the obviously Rogers has gone, so you can't do that celebration. But after Saturday, we want you to do the Latte Laugh dance, you know, when he scored. <laughs> sure you can do that. You're used to swinging your arms, so I'm sure you can do that. Well, you... I'll have to watch it. I'll have to watch it again and uh, <laughs> rehearse them and maybe, maybe we'll see that. Coming soon at the 12th Man Podcast. I'm expecting great <laughs> things on Saturday. And I just want to say, I apologise for the language that came out of Yusuf's mouth. The use of Alan Shearer on this podcast is an absolute disgrace. Oh, hey. um, I, I tell you what, I didn't know. I didn't know Yusuf had so many uh, friends in high places. Micah Richards, Alan Shearer, and Gary Lineker. Any chance you can get him on the show, like Yusuf? Second time, I apologise for the language. Do not use Alan Shearer's name on this podcast. <laughs> Put that in the bin. Um, and One short is more than enough on you. Exactly. You can say that again. <laughs> no, don't say it again. <laughs> on that lovely note, I'm going to say cheerio to you, people. So thank you for coming in, as usual. Um, yeah, I'm talking to you there. I know, yeah. Well, well they'll say you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Um, <laughs> we work well. We work very well together. Um, thank you, you, you three, for coming on. Yusuf, thank you so much for popping on. Always a pleasure to no, talk to you. you. Um, thank you. Enjoy the game Saturday. We'll all be watching from afar, from the uh, north stand, watching you dance at the bottom. Because um, we can we all see you. <laughs> so if you haven't, you haven't mastered that latte laugh celebration, you'll be getting the message. Um, <laughs> rest of you, I'll see you at the weekend. Um, big game on Saturday. John, enjoy Birmingham. Bring some points back or don't come back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I will take extra fries with that. And uh, yes, and for you people listening, and watching and commenting, subscribing, liking, everything. Just thank you so much. It's 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 a nice podcast to make. It really it is. It was, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for giving up your time, Yusuf. We appreciate yeah, we it. really do. And uh, yes, pop back on next week. Have a little listen to what we're going to go on about. We could be happy again. We could be kicking off again. You don't know, do you? So yeah, that's the whole. That's the beauty of us. So, yep. Yeah. Cheers, boys. Up the borough. Be seeing you. Cheerio. Up the borough. Up the borough, lads. Cheers, lads. Thank you for Thanks listening to the 12th Man Podcast. Hope to we'll see you all again next week. Cheers, guys. Up the